So my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed about the heating effect given out by electric current. Now within this chapter, we'll be discussing about the, the second effect of electric current, which is the lighting effect. So light effect or lighting effect of electric current will be discussed under this chapter. So you know that there are certain instruments especially LEDs, light emitting diodes, right? These things are also referred as junction diodes. So normally junction diode means it's a type of an electrical component which pass electricity from one certain to a one certain direction only. But however, there are some certain diodes when electricity is going to direct towards a certain direction, right? By that diode, automatically a light energy is getting generated like the heat energy you know that electricity is getting passed to a certain material i told you that heat energy is generated in the same way in some diodes right in some diodes when the diode is going to pass electricity automatically a light energy is given out okay so these things can be utilized to get light energy in our day-to-day -day activities. So these diodes which can emit light energy upon passing electricity is called as light emitting diodes or LEDs in simple. So here it is given junctions of most junction diodes. So junctions of most junction diodes get heated when electric current flows through them. It happens because part of the electric energy is emitted as heat energy at the junction, right? So junctions of most junction diodes get heated when electric current flows through them. It happens because part of the electric energy or electrical current is emitted as heat energy at the junction. In some junction diodes, part of the electrical energy is emitted as light energy at the junction. Then the junction is illuminated. So in normal diodes, in normal usual junction diodes, right? In normal usual diodes, the thing which is going to happen is what? In most of the diodes, it's getting heated due to the resistance, right? Due to the resistance getting heated, right? Upon flowing electrical chargers, the junction is getting heated. That's the usual diode thing, right? That's the usual diode thing, my dear children. But however, there are special diodes, see? In some junction diodes, part of the electrical energy is emitted as the light energy at the junction. There are some parts in those cases right in those cases there are some certain cases or there are some special cases light energy is given out right light energy is given out so my dear children these things are the ones which are referred as see leds so when light energy is given out specialty in here is that these junction these junctions are going to illuminate, means emit light. So here part of electrical energy is emitted as light energy is known as the light effect of electric current. Such diodes that emit light are known as light emitting diodes or LED. So this thing can only be observed in diodes, right? When current is passing, right, even bit of a small bit of a current is passing through the diode, light is getting emitted and the junction is getting illuminated. So these diodes are specially referred as light emitting diodes, light emitting diodes, LED. Then here given an activity, now we are going to examine how does a diode or light emitting diode is going to work. Speciality here is that 
we are going to use or we are going to identify action of various light emitting diodes right my dear children now in here we have to use different colors of leds different types means various types means various colors especially so we'll be needing leds with different colors LEDs with different colors a switch switch wires dry cells dry cells so we'll be needing these materials we'll be needing LEDs with different colors a switch some wires and some dry cells so these are the ones that we need in conducting this activity here we are going to identify like what kind of a color is getting emitted right so what sort of a light energy is given out what kind of a light color is given out by each of these leds so there are like different colors so you have to find out several leds with several colors by that way we are going to investigate how these junctions are going to work light emitting diodes right so let's see how to conduct the activity so this activity is really simple what do you have to do you have to connect each of the leds according to the diagram given here right you are connecting each of the leds according to the diagram given here what you have to do is here is take one led and place it over the two terminals on here then after that take another different led and place it in the same way and observe what's going to happen like that we are we are going to place different different colors of leds with the circuit and then after that we are studying what's going to happen with the light bulb okay what's going to happen with the light bulb okay then so we'll write down the method so actually light bulb means here it's not okay to say a light bulb so the best and better name for these things are the leds don't mention as light bulbs because light bulbs means simply filament bulbs so therefore the better word is the word definition itself the leds okay right then so we'll be identifying what's going to happen with the leds when we are providing electricity so let's see set the system according to figure right so set the system according to the figure then after that what you have to do place each and every led place each and every LED on the circuit on the circuit and observe the light given out observe the light given out there is a special case in here, right? Very special case. When connecting LEDs to the circuit, we need to connect LEDs in a proper manner. I mean like LEDs have a different, I mean it has a definite direction of traveling. I mean like traveling means the electrical charges is going to travel only to a definite direction through an led right 
like in the diodes. Diodes are directing electrical charges only to a one certain direction. In the same way, LEDs are going also behave in the same way. I mean, like LEDs are also a type of a diode now. So they are also behaving same as the junction diodes. Specialty here is that junction diodes are going to generate heat most of the times, but LEDs are going to generate light energy instead of heat. Right? However, their process is the same. They are directing electricity from one certain terminal to another only to a certain direction only. Means that electricity can't pass into both the ways. Okay, so there is a definite positive terminal and definite negative terminal in an LED. So when connecting LEDs to the circuit, we have to check the correct terminals. Right, we have to check whether the terminals are correctly connected to the driver or not. So speciality here is that it's important to it's important to correctly Correctly connect, correctly connect terminals of LED of LED to the circuit. So this is really important my dear children, what's that? It's important to correctly connect terminals of LEDs to the circuit, right? So always positive to positive, negative to negative, okay? So here, let's see once again how to do this activity. Set the system according to the figure, like according to the figure, we have to set the apparatus or the instruments. Place each and every LED on the circuit and observe the light given out. So, a specialty here that when you are placing or when you are connecting LEDs, it's important to correctly connect terminals of the LEDs to the circuit. So, when I'm going to head on to the lab, I'm going to explain how to identify these positive and negative terminals in a freshly newly taken LEDs. Right, and also when I'm going to conduct the lesson after that part, I'm going to explain how you can identify the two terminals of an LED. Right, so my dear children, let's head on to the lab and we'll conduct this activity. We'll light up several LED bulbs and let's see what are our observations. Okay, my dear children, now within this activity, we'll be observing about the lighting effect provided by electric current. So, in order to identify the lighting effect of an electric current, I have several LEDs with me. These things are referred as light emitting diodes, a type of a diode. Specialty here is that light is getting emitted when you connect these diodes or light emitting diodes with electricity. If you take now, I have two dry cells with me. You know that a simple torch bulb is going to light up by using just a single dry cell. However, if I'm going to use just a single dry cell and I'm going to connect it with the LED here, right? I'm going to connect it with the LED here. So you can see that there is no brightness in the LED. However, if I'm going to use two dry cells together like this, 
if I'm going to use two dry cells in that case the LED is going to light up specialty here is that in order to light up an LED you need to provide more than 1.5 volts of potential difference so in this kind of a dry cell the potential difference is about 1.5 right 1.5 volts so two of them would create three volts so when you are lighting up an led it's important to provide at least oh, more than 1.5 volts means that definitely you will be needing more than one cell in order to light up an led right so now let's connect i have a switch but i'm going to remove this thing because it's not needed actually so i'm going to show you by connecting these things with these bulbs and let's observe their colors so first one you observe that this has a blue color second one let's see what's the color of this one it has a colorless surface we don't know the color it's emitting a bright red color light see a good red color light okay a red color light then let's go for the next one it's emitting a green color light my dear children a green color light see we'll go for the next one then so you you can see here in some leds the color is already marked on their surface like this so it's emitting once again a green color and you can see that the uh, structure outer structure has a green color as well so if i'm going to turn this one off compare it with the other one this has a green color this surface is blue in color so blue color one is emitting a blue light while the green color one is emitting a green color light so this is another one another led so let's connect it and we'll observe what's the color of it so it's a white color right it's in white color there's no distinct color in it it's white in color right so these are the ones that we used in our normal flashlights in our household led bulbs we use this kind of a light okay so there are different types of lights which are getting emitted right there are different kinds of lights which are getting emitted according to the nature of the substance which used to create the led right most of the times we use the substance called silicon in creating led but however there are other substances like arsenic as well right so according to the substance that we use to make led right the nature and the color which is getting emitted is going to change so you will be learning about led when you are moving on to grade 11 right further things related to led how does the color is going to change how what is their structure like that way you'll be learning several things related to the led in grade 11. however up to now in grade 8 we have studied about the led and there are different colors different materials are being used to create led so my dear children this is the lighting effect of an led right so specialty here in led is that we need to provide at least two dry cells in order to light up an led and i'm going to take just one led we'll take the green one here you know that when you take a simple torch bulb it's going to light up even though when i'm going to change the terminals right there's no distinct terminals in the uh, in a torch bulb but however if you take an led it has two distinctive terminals if you take the structure of this led and if you check it very carefully you can observe one terminal of the led one terminal of this led is somewhat longer than the other terminal one terminal is somewhat longer see one terminal you can observe that this is the shorter terminal see this terminal is shorter somewhat shorter right 
and the other terminal is somewhat lengthier than the right shorter terminal see you can see it very clearly this one this one is shorter and the other one is somewhat lengthier if you observe all of these leds all of these leds have the same nature right see one is shorter and the other one is lengthier see so you know that there are two terminals when i'm going to use these things right one is shorter and the other one is somewhat lengthier not that much but somewhat right so like that way when you check each of these you can observe that difference so all the terminals that are lengthier this one this one this one all the ones which have a good length or all the terminals which are lengthier are positive terminals those are positive terminals shorter ones are the negative terminals so i can show it to you so this is the lengthier terminal i'll use a different one so that you can observe it very clearly so this is the lengthier terminal see this one the lengthier terminal this one is the shorter terminal so when i'm going to connect the lengthier terminal with the positive here you can observe that it has a red color and the negative here the bulb is going to light up right so what happens if i'm going to interchange the two terminals going to interchange now see lengthier one see lengthier one with the black color negative and the shorter one with the positive see no difference at all once again if i am going to interchange the light bulb or the led should light up see it's lighting up so my dear children when you are connecting these led there is an speciality speciality is that there are two distinctive terminals as positive and negative so always the lengthier terminal is the positive one and the shorter terminal is the negative terminal in each and every led that's the standard way of denoting an led right usually when they are being published to the commercial market one terminal is somewhat shorter than the other one right so that shorter terminal is the negative terminal and the lengthier one is the positive one right so let's head on to the classroom once again and we'll discuss further things related to our lesson okay my dear children so we conducted the activity and you could observe that when connecting these leds to the circuit different kinds of light is given out right or different types of different types means here different colors different colors of light is given out when it is getting connected to the circuit so thereby we can conclude that when providing electricity to an led right it's going to illuminate by providing light energy so we can say that leds are lighted up instead of illuminated i'll use lighted up as it is very simple right so leds are lighted up giving different colors giving different colors when passing electricity right so leds are lighted up giving different colors when passing electricity so our conclusion is conclusion is really simple what's our conclusion so our conclusion is my dear children if you take leds or these junction diodes they're going to 
emit light energy upon providing electricity right so light is given out light is given out when passing when passing electricity through so light is given out when passing electricity through LEDs so this is our final conclusion so LED is a special kind of an instrument that we use in our day-to-day -day life in order to light up or in order to illuminate right illuminate uh, several things in our environment most of the times we use uh, LEDs as our light bulbs and to make different kinds of panels and decorations okay so that's a speciality in LEDs and the real speciality or the most advantage or the most generous generous advantage in LEDs is that if you take an LED the electricity consumed by LED is very less right as less amount of heat energy is getting generated from it right then this is our special observation and the conclusion which we can take from the activity so let's head on to see what are the other contents in this leds so light emitting diodes emit various colors of light so we studied about that thing right colors of the light emitted depends on the compound used to make the junction of led now this is important my dear children according to the material that we use to make the led the color given out by the led is going to change or it's going to differ according to the material different colors are given out some leds emit several colors they are known as multicolor leds i mean like now when you take leds usually they are emitting one single color but however there are light emitting diodes if you connect them to a certain circuit different colors are give, given out like blue red yellow all of these colors are given out not once not at once but however at different time intervals right different colors are given out so these things are referred as multicolor leds LEDs are used for light decorative purposes as well as indicators to show whether circuit equipments are in active mood. Definitely you have seen that in some chargers, right? In some laptop chargers, mobile phone chargers. I think you have observed that when it is being plugged into a certain plug pane or to a socket, right? It's going to show that that particular charger is going to show that it's working through an LED right there's an LED bulb a small LED bulb it's going to light up so if it is lighting up we can say that it's working right so if the LED is not lighting up then we can say that it's not working so in order to give a signal right in order to check whether the equipments are working or not as an indicator we use leds in different kinds of circuits okay especially in chargers right then there's a high demand for lamps made of led than for other types of electrical lamps and the bulbs because of the prevailing energy crisis the reason for this is higher efficiency of LED lamps than the other types of lamps. So we have discussed this thing under household electrical appliances thing. So I told you what's the difference between a filament bulb and an LED. LEDs are very much efficient. It's because that less amount of heat energy is given out. The main 
energy form which is getting generated from LED is the light energy, not heat. Unlike the filament or any other types of bulbs. Those bulbs are generating light energy by utilizing electricity. But however, the main energy conversion in those electrical appliances is not light energy. In filament bulbs, I told you strictly that heat energy is the main product. As a secondary product, light is given out. Right? Those things are extremely getting heated. That's why the light is getting out given out okay so but in leds the main energy conversion which is going to occur within the junction is converting electricity to light energy so therefore efficiency of leds are very high okay so it's given figure given below shows an led and its circuit symbol when an led is being connected to a circuit the positive and negative terminals should be connected properly right or correctly so i told you that when you are connecting this led to a circuit it's important to connect positives and negative terminals correctly to the circuit now in the early activity also when i'm conducting the activity i told you that connecting these equipment to a circuit is really important in a proper manner i mean like we have to correct it correctly Otherwise, the LED is not going to emit light. If you are going to interchange the two terminals, then the LED would never light up. But however, there is not, there, there is no such effect in normal light bulbs, like filament bulbs. You can interchange the two terminals, right? So there is no effect. But however, in LEDs, correctly we have to connect positive to the positive terminal, negative to the negative terminal. Otherwise, the LED will not light up at all. So here yeah, is given that there is a minimum voltage that should be supplied to an LED to light it. Voltage supplied should exceed that minimum value for the LED to light it up. Right. There is a minimum value. Okay. There is a minimum value in order to light up an LED. Minimum value means here a minimum voltage. Usually my dear children it's around 1.5 volts so 1.8 volts. Usually it's around 1.5 to 1.8 means now in a normal usual dry cell triple A sized one maximum possible potential difference or the voltage given out is 1.5 volt. But however, my dear children, we use just one single dry cell. We can't light up an LED. Why is that? Because the minimum voltage, minimum voltage needed to light up an LED is about one is between 1.5 to 1.8. It's greater than 1.5 volts. So, therefore, if you need to light up an LED, you need to provide voltage greater than at least 1.8. Right? Means like 2 volts, 3 volts, 3 volts would be much better. So, we can't light up an LED by using only one single dry cell. We have to use two dry cells in order to light up an LED. So there is a minimum voltage in which these LEDs are going to work up with. That uh, voltage is always greater than 1.5 volts. So my dear children, there is a minimum voltage, right, that should be supplied and it should exceed that minimum voltage for the LED to light up. So once again, you are given with a certain figures. So this is the usual way of LED. Now let's imagine that. So this is a freshly or newly bought LED from the market. This figure shows that. So it's really easy to identify the two terminals if the LED is bought freshly from the market. Always the shorter, there, is, there are two terminals and one terminal is shorter but the other is lengthier than that. Here also you can observe it. 
here also you can observe it always my dear children this is a law right and this is this law is followed by each and every company which is going to provide or produce leds that law is that shorter terminal is always negative longer terminal is always positive each and every company which is going to produce leds is going to follow up with this law always all the time this law is being followed by the companies so by just looking at the led each and every person who have a sound knowledge about the led can identify the positive and negative terminals just by looking at it the lengthier one longer one is the positive terminal while the shorter one is the negative one so in here also this bulb this led also you can observe see this is the positive terminal it's already been marked and this shorter one is the negative terminal and my dear children there is another speciality let's imagine that okay let's imagine that this is not a freshly bought this is not a freshly bought led from the market we have removed it from a certain circuit in that case both the terminals are in same length then how we can identify the two terminals one method is that you can connect it to a dry cell and see which one is the positive terminal which one is the negative terminal when it is connected to two dry cells the only possible way to light up an led is pos connecting positive terminal to the positive terminal while connecting negative to the negative terminal only by that way you can identify the two terminals of the led but there is another way by looking at it once again you can say what terminal is positive and what is the negative terminal how to say you just take the led like this and you touch the bottom circular base bottom circular base like this by your fingers definitely you can feel a cut i mean like the circle is not continuous it's not completely round there is a cut which is being introduced at a certain uh, terminal like this see here to here the circle is okay but however after the, this there is a cut so always at the base there is a cut that cut is introduced always there is a cut so cut is always introduced to the negative terminal this cut is always introduced to the negative terminal just touch it at the base you have to touch it like this there is a cut that cut is introduced to show the negative terminal so by that way also you can identify positive and negative terminals that's the standard way to identify the positives and negative terminals right so my dear children this is the circuit symbol circuit symbol for led right here you can observe in the circuit symbol the positive negative terminal is same as the diodes right this lengthier one there is a line like this from a vertex there is a line which is coming this line always showing the negative terminal while the other terminal shows the positive terminal in order to show that light is going out from the uh, led or from the junction two arrows are being used okay so this is the normal circuit symbol for an led so always remember there are two possible ways to identify the positive and negative terminals in an led if it is bought freshly from the market one terminal should be a lengthier one and the other one should be a shorter one the shorter one is the negative terminal lengthier one is the positive terminal if not if you touch the base of it right if you touch the base circular part of it there is a cut which is being introduced okay there is a cut which is being introduced so that cut indicates the negative terminal while the other terminal indicates the positive terminal okay right then
so this is my dear children about the so that's really simple that's all about with the lighting effect of the electric current about the led so my dear children now in next part we'll be discussing about it's given here the magnetic effect of electric current lighting if it is here is simple we use leds and how to identify led how to connect those led to a circuit that's it so we'll be discussing about the magnetic effect the next important effect in electric current so let's see you may have seen that iron nails and pins are attracted to a magnet same way you can see that the indicator is deflected when a compass is brought closer to a magnet when a compass is kept closer to a current carrying conductor also its indicator deflects it's strange right when providing electricity to a conductor compass need or else a compass is going to deflect in the earlier point it is saying that you may have seen that the iron nails and pins are getting attracted to a magnet we know that it's because they those things are having magnetic properties and a magnet can attract the materials that has magnetic properties right in the same way you can see that the indicators indicator is deflected when a compass is brought closer to a magnet that's also obvious right we know that compass is a magnetic material it's because that compass is made up with a magnet a simple free rotating magnet which is inside a certain case so it's a type of a magnet and it is given that when you board that thing to a magnet the two magnets either they should attract or else they should repel each other so there's an effect right definitely there is an effect what the thing is that the second point what is that we know that magnets are getting attracted to magnets that's okay but see when a compass is kept closer to a current carrying conductor when a compass is kept closer to a current carrying conductor i mean like when the current is getting getting passed from a certain place to another through a conductor its indicator is going to deflect indicator of the compass is going to deflect why such kind of a observation is observed why does the indicator is getting deflected when current is passing through the conductor it's because my dear children when current is passing through the conductor a magnetic effect a magnetism is getting generated a magnetic field is getting generated around the conductor that's the reason of deflecting this indicator in the compass so it happens because a magnetic field is generated by a current carrying conductor this phenomenon is known as the magnetic effect of electric current so always remember when a certain electrical equipment or when a certain electrical conductor carries current from one place to another automatically a magnetic field is generated around it so that magnetic field is very helpful to deflect that indicator in the compass that's why the compass needle is going to deflect so compasses are not going to work well if they are near a conductor that carries electrical charges it's going to show different kinds of directions other directions instead of north and south right so the operation of a compass is getting highly affected operation of a compass is getting highly affected because of a current okay right so when the current flowing through the conductor is stopped indicator of the compass is returns to its initial position so when the current is not going to flow once again the indicator comes to original position okay right my dear children now this is the magnetic effect given out by the electric current okay so let's see whether this thing is going to happen actually or not 
we are about to discuss in the next step a simple experiment to show that this magnetic effect is going to work with each and every conductor and it's going to deflect the compass medium. So first of all, you'll be needing these materials. What are the materials you need? You've been definitely needing a compass. Compass. Wooden sheet. Iron nail. Iron nails. Wooden sheet, iron nails. Then copper strings or copper wires. Strings are much better. Switch. Bulb. Dry set. So these are the materials that you need. You will be needing a compass, a wooden sheet, some iron nails, copper wires, means copper strings, then tricells, a bulb and a switch. Right then. So my dear children, let's see how to conduct this activity. So you are given with the method. See, it's really simple. Fix two iron nails at the corners of the piece of plank as shown in figure stretch well and tie the copper wire to these nails. So we will be needing that wooden sheet or the wooden plank and we need to fix the two nails firmly onto it. Then after that you have to fix that copper wire onto the two nails right. Remember when you are using these copper strings you have to clean. It is because that there is an enamel layer. There is an insulated layer around each and every coil, each and every wire. So you have to clean it very well before you are going to connect it with the iron nails. Okay. Right. So you have to connect like that. Then by connecting wires, you are going to complete the circuit like this. After that, what do you have to do? Let's see. Connect the two ends of the copper wire to the bulb to the dry cell and the uh, switch as shown in the figure. So by connecting wires, by using connecting wires, you have to connect, interconnect all these together after joining those two uh, iron nails with the copper wire. Then after that, place the compass under the stretched copper wire, turn on and off the switch and observe. Right. Then what you have to do? You have to place the compass below the, below that copper wire. You have to place the compass below that copper wire. Then what you have to do? Turn on and off the switch and observe. You have to turn on the switch and observe. You have to turn off the switch and observe what is going to happen. Right. If my assumption or if the theory is correct, then definitely when the switch is closed, or else when the circuit is turned on, the compass needle definitely deflects. It should definitely deflect. Right? So let's see. It's because, now, let's see why does it is going to happen. It's because that you know that electrical charges coming out from the dry cell coming towards the bulb and going towards this iron nail. And the iron nail is connected, interconnected with the copper wire here. So, when electrical charges are passing from that copper wire, a magnetic field is getting generated. Due to that magnetic field, definitely what will happen? This reading or the indicator of the compass will rotate. Right. So, this is our activity, my dear children. So, let us head on to the lab. We will conduct this activity and let us see whether it is going to happen or not. Right my dear children. Now within this activity we will be identifying the magnetic effect given out by the electric current. Okay. So I have prepared a setup, a simple setup with me. There are two iron nails here 
and here right these two iron nails are connected with crocodile clips which runs through the switch and comes back to the positive terminal which goes through here and comes back once again to the other iron nail so you know that when i'm going to turn on the switch an electric current is going to flow towards that direction and which is going to come back to the negative terminal starting from the positive terminal so you know that if you take a compass now there is a compass this is a compass you know that this is a compass if you take a compass my dear children a specialty in compass is that compasses are made up with freely rotatable magnets so there is a magnet which is placed below the copper wire that runs through from here to here there is a magnet in here how can I say it is as a magnet? Because it is a compass. You know that compasses are simple magnets. Right. So I have or I have taken another magnet here in order to show that there is no deflection in this one, but there is a deflection in that one when I am going to turn on the switch. Right. So this is some kind of a modified activity so that you can get a sound or wonderful observation. So I have used two compasses here. So what I'm going to do is now, first of all, I'm going to show you that this is the north direction towards that. And in the second compass also, the north direction is that, right? Both the compasses are now showing north direction. Now I'm going to turn on the switch and let's see what happens with the compass needle of this one which is at below the copper wire. So let's see what's going to happen. So once again, I'm going to turn on the switch. See, it's, it is getting a line now. Now the, now the switch is in off stage, right? Switch is off. It is getting aligned with the same direction as the second compass here. This is the first compass below the copper wire. Turn on. Compass needle is going to turn to that direction, but however, the second compass needle is remained in the same position. You can observe it very clearly. This haven't got changed, but this one has got changed. Means that when current is flowing towards that direction, some kind of a energy is pulling this magnetic needle towards that direction. So you know that magnets are getting influenced with the magnetic properties or magnetism or magnetic field. Even these magnets are or even these compasses are turning towards north and south direction because of the geomagnetism. So when I'm going to turn on the switch, some kind of a magnetic field is getting generated on the copper wire so that the needle of the compass can turn to a different direction. It's because of the magnetic field created by the copper wire. That's why it is getting influenced because the compass needle is also a magnet. And when current is flowing through the copper wire, a magnetic field is getting gen generated. So the two magnets are getting interacted each other to change the direction of the compass needle. Once again, I'm going to show you by turning on the switch. See, this one changes, but this one doesn't. Now I'm going to show you a, some kind of a different observation. I'm going to keep both the compasses near each other like this, but at a somewhat different. Okay, let's keep this thing for a while so that they would align in the same direction. Yes. Okay, my dear children, now I have placed the second compass also near or below the copper wire. Now let's turn on the switch. Now once again you can observe that both the compasses are showing in the same direction. Okay. Now once again I am going to turn on the switch and let's see 
whether there is a deflection in both the compasses or not. See, both the compasses are going to deflect. Now, by keeping this compass in the same way, I am going to take the other compass away from the copper wire. See what has happened. Once again, it would align in the north direction. However, this one is again still at the same position. So, when I am going to disconnect it, it runs back to the original position. So, this concludes that. A magnetic field is generated by the copper wire when current is going to flow through it. So, by this activity we can finally conclude when there is an electric current automatically a magnetic effect is getting generated around the conductor. Right? Okay then. So, let us head on to the classroom once again and we will discuss further things related with our lesson. So, my dear children, you could observe that when I am turning on the switch, what will happen to the compass? It will definitely deflect. It is going to deflect. And I have used that second compass, right? I have used that second compass as well to show you a better, to give you a better idea that the magnetic field is getting generated from the conductor, right? So, my dear children, it is obvious to us that when electricity is passing through a conductor, automatically what happens? A magnetic field is getting generated, right? So, first of all, we will write down the observation of this activity. So, our uh, observation is really simple. What happens here is that when switch is closed when switch is closed indicator when switch is closed indicator of the compass deflects Then, when switch is opened, indicator, indicator goes back to initial position right so when switch is opened indicator goes back to initial position in the other case when switch is closed closing and opening means turning on and off closing means closing the circuit means turning on Opening the circuit means turning off. So, when switch is closed, indicator of the compass deflects. When turning on the circuit, it is going to deflect. We observed that. When switch is opened, indicator goes back to initial position. So, my dear children, conclusion that we can take from the experiment is that the final conclusion it's really simple when electricity is passing from the conductor magnetic field is generated when passing electricity when passing electricity from the conductor When passing electricity from the conductor, here copper string, here especially it is the copper string, right. When passing 
electricity from the conductor especially here copper string what happens a magnetic field a magnetic field is generated Right. So, when passing electricity from the conductor or from the copper string, right, a magnetic field is generated around it. So, this is our final conclusion from the activity. Right, my dear children. So, let us see what are the other contents given under the magnetic effect. Right. Okay, now, there is another activity which is given here. Now, within this activity, we will be observing, right, like what kind? of factors are essential or like what kind of factors are important what kind of factors should we consider when making or when uh, strengthening out this magnetic effect given out by the conductors okay so now let's see how to conduct this activity so here we are investigating the factors essential for the magnetic effect right by changing which factor does this magnetic effect is going to change so here we are going to make a temporary magnet in order to observe those factors so in making temporary magnets or electromagnets i think in the magnets lesson we prepared these magnet electromagnets right i think you could remember right so in the same way we are going to prepare a magnet, a temporary magnet or else an electromagnet. So, we will be needing these materials cleaned iron nails, right? If they are not cleaned, then you can use these sandpapers to scratch out the surface. Then, after that, insulated. insulated copper coil or copper wire insulated copper wire right cleaned iron nails insulated copper wire then dry cells to provide electricity of course you will be needing a switch then an ammeter Or else you can use a millimeter also, but however, you know that there are two different scales in an ammeter, so we can use the ammeter as well. Then we will be needing several pins, smaller pins, several pins. Then you know that the copper wire is insulated, right? You know that copper wire is insulated. So, if the copper wire is insulated in order to scratch out that is insulated part, okay, in order to scratch out that insulated part, that enamel part, right, we have to use some sandpapers or else we have to directly use, we have to directly, right, wrap, on, wrap the uh, coil on the iron nail, then after that two ends should be cleaned very well before connecting it with the dry cells okay however in, in in cleaning process you have to definitely use a sandpaper sandpapers so we'll be needing cleaned iron nails insulated copper wire dry cells a switch an ammeter several pins and some sand papers okay not some actually one is enough right so my dear children let's see what is the method of conducting the activity actually this is somewhat like it's a lengthier method method is somewhat lengthier so listen very carefully how to conduct 
make a coil by winding enamel plated copper wire round a nail connect the coil to the emitter switch and one dry cell in series as shown in figure 1 so according to the figure 1 we have to use just a one dry cell right first of all you have to wrap around the wrap the copper wire around the iron nail it's enamel plated i told you enamel plated means insulated right so according to the figure one what you have to do you have to wrap that copper wire and we have to connect it with the emitter with the dry cell through the switch close the switch bring the coil close to the pins count the number of pins attracted and record ah now there are several pins which we have used no so you have to bring near this iron nail which wrapped around with the coil near to that pins and you have to check how many pins are getting attracted to the iron nail okay and you have to record it also then after that open the switch and remove the iron nail from the coil carefully as shown in the figure 2 then close the switch and bring the coil closer to the pins count the number of pins attracted and record open the switch and remove the iron nails from the coil carefully as shown in the figure 2 then close the switch and bring the coil closer to pins count the number of pins attracted and record figure 2 in the figure 2 now before that we have to remove this one and we have to remove these iron nails okay now as shown in the figure 2 as shown in the figure 2 second figure now in the second figure you can see that iron nail has been removed right you have to remove the iron nail you have to carefully remove the iron nail from the second figure so in the second figure you can observe very clearly iron nail has been removed now there is only the coil so then close the switch and bring coil closer to the pins count the number of pins attracted and record so using the same circuit you just need to remove the iron nail and you have to take the coil near to the dropping pins or to the pins and observe how many pins are getting attracted second step third step connect two dry cells in series to the circuit as shown in the figure 3 instead of one cell then close the switch and bring the coil closer to the pins count the number of pins attracted and record and now in the earlier case here we used only one single dry cell now in this case we have to use two dry cells right see Connect two dry cells in series to the circuit as shown in figure 3. So, in here you have to use two of these cells, right? You have to use two of these cells, or else you can use a dry cell that has more voltage, like a 9 volt cell, okay? Right, then let's see the fourth step. There is another one. Make another coil by winding more number of turns of copper wire round an iron nail as shown in the figure 4. If you want, you can reduce the turns as well by removing a piece of coil. Now, in the last step, what you have to do, you have to reduce the length of the coil or to increase it. However, you have to change the length, right? You have to change the length of the coil in the fourth step. Either you could increase the number of turns or the length of the coil, or else you can decrease the number of turns or the length of the coil by removing a piece. You can do anything you want. Here we are changing the length of the conductor, number of windings in the conductor, right? By changing it, we are observing what's going to happen with the magnetism, okay? So, changing means you can increase or else decrease. It's quite easy to decrease. The only thing that you need to do is cut a piece and remove it, then wind it again. Really simple. Connect this coil with the nail to the circuit as before as shown in figure 4. Close the switch and bring the iron nail closer to the pins. Count the number of pins attracted and record. Record the emitter reading also. So it's given that in each and every case you have to get the emitter readings also. Right my dear children?
Okay. So, this is the way of conducting activity. Once again, I will explain the four steps. First step. First of all, we need to wind the coil around the iron nail and connect it with one dry cell. Bring near the pins and count how many are getting attracted. Check the ammeter reading. Replace the one dry cell with another one or else with a more powerful dry cell and observe how many are getting attracted and remember to get the ammeter reading. Number three, remove the iron core, I mean the iron nail which is at the middle. Just take only the coil, get the reading about on the ammeter, bring the coil closer to the pins, see how many are getting attracted. In fourth and final, what do you have to do? Either you have to remove a piece from the coil or else you have to add more windings. You have to increase the length of the coil. Actually, you can use the same coil rather than using a different one. You can use the same one, cut a piece from it, then rewind on the iron nail, take a dry cell, connect it, observe how many pins are getting attracted, make sure to connect the ammeter as well to get a reading. Okay, right. So, this is the way of conducting our activity. It's very simple, my dear children. So, let's head on to the lab once again. We'll conduct this activity and let's see what's going to happen with the magnetic effect in each of these four steps. So, my dear children, in this activity, we will be studying about the magnetic effect given out by electric current. Especially, we are finding out what are the factors that is going to effect for the magnetic effect, right? So, I mean like, like what kind of factors? that can be changed in order to get more amount of magnetism or else if you want to reduce the magnetic effect which is getting created what kind of thing that can be done so we'll be needing these materials first okay we'll be needing a copper coil so here i have with me a copper coil right So like this, we'll be needing a copper coil and this copper coil is wrapped around an iron nail. As you can see here, it's wrapped around an iron nail very well. Then after that, a switch and some connecting wires, some pins, file clips and pins. Then I have an ammeter with me right then these are several connecting wires over here and to power up the circuit i have dry cells so first of all we are going to do what we are going to do is we're going to connect this system to an electric cell by using this instrument so i'm going to connect the switch here then uh, our ammeter then right now i'm going to connect the coil wrapped around the iron nail like this for these two terminals now my circuit is completed so what i have done here is the emitter comes to the positive terminal goes like this connects with the iron nail wrapped around the coil and comes here to the switch and goes back to the negative terminal in here Okay, so this is my circuit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pins 
Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on the switch and let's see what's going to happen. So you can see there is a clear deflection in the emitter. It's getting attracted towards the, see, one, two, three. There are three pins which are getting attracted towards the iron nail. So three pins are getting attracted to the iron nail. When I'm going to supply one tricell. Okay, right. Now I'm going to disconnect my circuit once again. Right, I'm going to disconnect my circuit. Now, in the second step, we need to remove the iron nail and try it with only from the coil. But however, it's difficult to remove and re-enter these things to the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the fourth step in here. I'm going to insert two dry cells now. And to provide a good current to the circuit, right? So earlier it was only from one dry cell, like this, from one dry cell. So we turned on the switch and you could observe that three of the iron nails are getting, three of the pin, pins are getting attracted. See, there is like three. Now at this time there is four right so there is a clear deflection in the emitter reading as well so emitter reading now is at 0 0.4 see 0 0.4 0 0.4 is the answer for the emitter reading and there are four pins which are getting attracted so i'm going to cut the current now Right. So 0 0.4 and 4 pins. Now I am going to insert the second dry cell. So it would make this practical rather more easy. Right. And I'm going to insert it like this. So remember, children, 0 0.4, 4 pins. Okay. Now let's see what is going to happen here. So at this time you can see that now it's way more greater than 0 0.6 of amperes, right? The emitter reading is greater than 0 0.6. However, we'll take that one as 0 0.6 amperes, right? So if I want to change the, if I want to get a accurate value, I need to change the scale to 3 here. By that way, I can get a value. Right, so let's see how much is it. So it deflects greater than one and uh, it's greater than one, one point four. Yes, one point four. But it is keep getting reduced from time to time because the because of the effect given here. So I'll name it as one here. We'll take it as one. Right? It's more closer to one. Actually, it's one point two now. So it's more closer to one. Right? So we'll round off it, round off this thing, and we'll take it as one. Okay. So now when I'm connecting two dry cells, one ampere of a current is obtained. And let's see how many pins are getting attracted at this time. Right. So you can see here, there's a file clip and one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pins are getting attracted with the file clip. Now all together, there are seven, seven clips or seven pins which are getting attracted. So when I'm using two dry cells, seven pins, and the emitter reading is at 1 amperes. 
somewhat slightly greater than 1 but however we will round off and take it as 1 amperes. So in the earlier case 0 0.4 and 4 pins. This time 1 ampere 7 pins. Okay. 1 ampere 7 pins. Right. Then I am going to disconnect this thing now. Okay. I'm going to disconnect. Now let's go for the other steps. So as we can see here, when I am connecting two dry cells, my dear children, I am providing a greater current. You can see it by using the ammeter reading. So ammeter reading runs to 1 ampere when I am using two dry cells. In the earlier, it was around 0 0.4, right? So in the first case, when the electric current is only 0 0.4, only four pins got attracted towards my temporary magnet. However, when I'm going to increase the number of dry cells to increase the current of uh, from 0 0.4 to 1 ampere, I could attract seven pins. Means that my magnetism has got increased during the process of increasing dry cells or increasing current. So when I'm going to increase the current, you can clearly see that the magnetism of the electromagnet or the magnetic magnetic effect given out by this circuit is going to increase so we can say that when electric current provided to a system is greater greater magnetic field can be observed now let's go for the other cases as well so now i'm going to remove this right i'm going to remove this and i'm going to take The iron nail out okay like this let's take out the iron nail right so we have removed the iron nail now now what I'm going to do is once again I'm going to supply electricity I'm going to keep both the dry cells once again, I am going to provide electricity to this coil by removing that iron nail. Right, here we go then. Once again, you can observe that the current is at 1 ampere range. Now, let's see whether these things are getting attracted to the coil. Right. So here you can see just a one pin is getting attracted. Just a one pin. But however, when I'm going to insert the, you can remember that when I'm inserting that iron nail, right? Seven got attracted. But however, at this time only one got attracted. Means that from this activity, we can say that when I am going to remove the iron nail in the system or when I am going to remove the soft iron bar, it is going to affect the magnetism, right? And when the magnetism is going to reduce, then there is no iron, soft iron core within the coil, right? Then the third step. In the third step, what I am going to do is, I am going to reduce the number of turns in the coil. So in order to reduce the number of turns in the coil, so I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to keep now, I'm going to remove several number of turns. So in removing number of turns, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove a piece of copper coil in here. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to remove it. So let's remove. Right. So you know that every conductor, right, every copper coil, it has some kind of a covering, right. So I have removed a piece, you can see it very clearly. Okay. So every coil has a conduct, have, has a uh, some insulation around the coil. So I'm going to insert the iron nail as well, right. So let's insert the iron nail. 
So, this one contains this one also contains some kind of a layer in here. So, we need to scratch it up. Okay. So, to scratch it, once again I will use the same instrument. So, let us scratch this thing up. So, we need to scratch it very well in order to remove that coating. There is a plastic kind of a coating over here. You have to remove it, otherwise, the electricity will not be conducted through it. So, we did this experiment when I was doing the magnets lesson also. I told you that in a certain or in every kind of a coil, there is an insulation around it, like a special kind of a coating. So, we need to remove it before connecting to a circuit. So, here you can see the color change very well, right. Now, let us connect it and we will see what is going to happen. So, I am connecting it. Now, you could remember at the earlier case, 7 pins got attracted. Now, let us turn on. Yes, once again, you can see that the emitter reading is at 1 ampere. So, let us see how many pins are getting attracted once again, right. So, let us see how many pins are getting attracted, right. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. You can see that 4 pins are getting attracted towards the iron nail at this time. But however, you can see that the ampere range is at, uh, is at 1, around 1. Okay. I have removed a piece of copper string. See, in here, you can observe the piece which I have removed. I have removed a certain piece of copper coil from the initial one. So, when I am going to remove a piece of copper coil, you can observe that the number of turns within the coil is going to reduce. So, I am going to disconnect the circuit. When I am going to reduce the number of turns within the coil, you could see that only 4, see only 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only 4 of the pins are getting attracted towards the iron nail. So, by that way we can say that when decreasing the length of the conductor, when decreasing the length of the coil, when decreasing the number of turns within the coil, we can say that the magnetic field or the magnetism generated within the circuit is also going to reduce. So, that is why let us number of four, only 4 pins are getting attracted towards the iron nail. So, by that way we can say that when reducing the number of turns within the coil, the magnetism which is getting generated is also going to deplete, right. Less amount of magnetic field is getting generated when I am going to use less number of turns around the iron nail. Right. So, these are the things that we need to consider my dear children when we are considering about the magnetic effect. First and foremost, the current which is getting provided or current provided to the system is going to change the magnetic effect. The presence of an iron bar or else a presence of an iron core is going to affect for the magnetism. Then the third one the number of turns or the length of the conductor and by increasing the number of cells I have changed the current in the system and the current is also going to affect for the magnetic effect. So, there are four factors, right. So, these are the factors that we have studied in here under the, under the magnetic field under like by changing these factors, we can change the magnetic effect given out by 
the electric current. So there are four main factors once again presence of an ion core, length of the conductor or length of the coil, then the current given to the circuit, magnitude of the current given to the circuit, then finally, right, then finally uh, the number of the presence of an ion core, then second one uh, coil, the length of the coil or the length of the conductor, then after that current given to the circuit, then uh, finally uh, you can say that when change in these factors, right, we can change the magnetic effect. So let's head on to the classroom once again and let's see what our observations and conclusions from the activity. Right, my dear children. So we conducted the activity. Now we'll complete our observations according to this table. So first number of pins attracted, step one. One cell with co okay there was iron core in it but only one cell so here ammeter reading was 0 0.4 amperes nearly it was 0 0.4 and the number of pins that got attracted is also equal to 4 right 4 pins then step 2 no co. So in here also only one pin got attracted ammeter reading. Now here we used two cells. So the ammeter reading was one ampere. You could observe it. In step three here two cells with co two cells with co seven pins got attracted with one ampere of a current in step four in the fourth step we used two cells we used two cells less length less length in coil right only four pins got attracted however the current was one ampere so these are our observations right my dear children so once again see in the first step now I have changed the steps, okay, I have interchanged the steps, right. So here or else I uh, will rewrite the table according to the steps given above, okay. So with co only one dry cell, four pins got attracted and the emitter reading was 0 0.4 amperes. In the second step, now when I am conducting the activity, it was easy of me to use two dry cells at once, right, rather than going for the other steps. So what I have done here is I have used two cells thing, I mean like I have increased the current in the second step, right, and I observed that uh, only uh, and, and I have observed that seven pins are getting attracted however in the table right I have mentioned it correctly right as the second step I have mentioned here I have inserted the or I have removed the core core means the iron nail so I have removed it no core here then I have used two cells even though I am using two cells there is no attractions like that in the previous case I have used only the attraction of one particular pin only so here one then here one ampere but when I was conducting the activity I have interchanged right interchanged mean for my convenient I have what I have done here over there is 
for the second step I did the third and for the third step I did the second but however in here it's okay okay right in the third step two cells are being plugged into the system with a core and seven pins got attracted by giving out emitter reading of one ampere once again two cells been given or in the fourth step two cells being used but however i have reduced the length of the coil in that case only four pins got attracted and the emitter reading was one ampere okay so you can see that magnetic effect magnetic effect of the current given out in each of these instances is differ from one to another it's because when i'm changing the factors like the electric current the core which is inside the coil number of windings or the length of the coil when i'm changing these factors the magnetism generated within the coil is also going to change so in the conclusion we can write length of the coil conductor then after that co inside co inside the coil here especially iron nail right co inside the coil then third one current flowing through the coil current flowing through the coil so length of the coil here especially the conductor core inside the coil core means the iron nail right whatever the iron particle whatever the material which is inside the coil and the third one current flowing through the coil or the conductor are the factors that changes the or that change the magnetic effect of the electric current ah the factors are the factors that affects the magnetic effect are the factors that affects the magnetic effect Are the factors that magnetic effect of current here this one should be are the factors that controls so length of the coil or the conductor core inside the coil here especially the iron nail current flowing through the coil are the factors that control the magnetic effect of current so these are the three factors that controls the magnetic effect of the current by looking now these observations we came into this conclusion my dear children right so let's head on to see 
what are the other things contained under this. So once again you are given C. According to the activity above, it is revealed that the strength of an electromagnet depends on type of core in the coil, type of the core. The electric current flowing through the coil, electric current, amount of electric current flowing through the coil. Number of turns of the coil, number of turns means here especially the length. Right. So, it's been concluded that these three factors are the ones which affects the magnetic effect in a current. So, here it is given how they are going to affect. Strength of an electromagnet, my dear children, increases when there is conducting medium mass the core of the coil. Between the coil, there should be a conducting medium or else a conductor, a core should be there. So, when there is a core within the coil, the strength of the magnetism is going to increase. Increases when electric current flowing through the coil is increased. When you are going to increase the current, when I am using 1 to 2 dry cells, pins got attracted increased from 4 to 7, emitter reading also increased from 0.4 to 1. So, my dear children, when increasing the current, we can say that what's going to happen? We can say that the strength of the magnetism is going to also is also going to increase. Number three, increases when the number of turns of the coil is increased, right? So, it in, increases when the number of turns of the coil is getting increased. Means when increasing the length of the conductor, what will happen? We can say that the magnetism or the magnetic effect is going to increase. As I am going to reduce the length of it, you can see that I have cut and removed. So, upon that, you could observe that only 4 pins has got attracted. However, in the earlier case, before the removal of a part, 7 got attracted. So, magnetism has reduced upon reduction of the length. So, these are the 3 factors that affects the magnetism in an electromagnet. Right. Users of electromagnets, have you ever dismantled any electrical appliances which are out of use? With the guidance of your teacher or an adult, do so and examine what is inside. In some electrical appliances, electromagnets are used. Now, there are some certain cases, some certain electrical appliances like electric bells. Like there is a hammer hitting on the bell cup and when that hammer is going to hit, hit on the bell cup, a, uh, a tone is getting emitted, right? That's how the electric bells works. So, that hammer is working as per to the magnetic effect given out in here, right? So, that bell, electric bell is utilizing magnetic effect given out by the electric current. So, here especially that core or that uh, instrument is referred as a electromagnet. So, by utilizing that electromagnet thing, right, by taking that electromagnet thing, what we are going to do here is we are going to, uh, we are going to use that magnetic effect and we are going to operate that bell, the electric bell. Right. So, the electric bell is a type of an instrument, my dear children, which use the magnetism given out by the electric current. Right then. So, if you have any experience about dismantling a electric bell, you can find out a coil, a very larger coil wrapped around an iron core. Right. So, that is the one which is referred as the electromagnet. Uh, if you can find out a one, with the guidance of your elders, dismantle it and observe that electromagnet. Okay. So, here we are specially discussing about the users of electromagnets. One thing is electric bell. So, now we are going to write down several users of electromagnets. 
So in the earlier lesson under the magnets, we have already written down several uses of permanent magnets plus the electromagnets, uses of electromagnets. So in weight lifters, in cranes, in electric bells, we more often we use these electromagnets. So we can write in weight lifters. In weight lifters, in electric bells, in electric bells, next uses that in cranes. In cranes, also we use these electromagnets. So, my dear children, these are the places that we most often use electromagnets, right? So, this magnetic effect given out by the electric current is utilized in these instruments, right then. So, let us see what are the other contents in our lesson. Assignment given a bell cup, hacksaw blade, bolt of 1 centimeter with a nut, metal rods, 4 centimeter length, enamel plated copper wire, wooden stripe the size of 12 10 by 1 two balls of length of 1.5 centimeter conducting wires two dry cells and a sand paper make an electric bell using the above items with the assistance of your teacher when necessary so my dear children what you have to do is using these instruments what you have to do is you have to build up a electric bell so it's really simple what you have to do you take the sheet like this, right? Then take the bell cup, right? Fix it to the wooden sheet. Then after that, take that hexo blade like this. Mm -hmm. Wrap that copper coil around it. Take the two terminals. Connect it with the dry cells. Really simple. Keep a switch also. Turn on and off. Right. So when you are turning on, it's going to hit on this thing. Turn off. Once again, it is coming back. So when you turn on and off, it will like hit and come, hit and come, hit and come. It's really simple, my dear children. Right. So. You have to use balls in fixing the bell cup and my dear children uh, to fix the hacks blade also you have to use bolt like this right then after that you can make it like this. it's really simple so at home you can try out this thing try to make this thing right at home a simple activity to make a uh, to make a electric bell right my dear children so this is the way of conducting our or this is the way of making our toy electric bell right so i have never mentioned the parts in here it's really simple so i have never mentioned the parts in here so this is the coil which is wrapped around it and we have connected with the dry cells in here and the switch and this is as as here you can see the bell cup and the structure outer rectangle that's the wooden sheets so it's really simple so that's why i have never marked the uh, system labeled it okay right then so that's all about with the magnetic effect given out by the electric current right so even we discussed the method to make a toy electric bell that's going to work with the magnetic effect given out by the electric current so my dear children in the next chapter, we will be discussing the other effect given out by the electric current, which is the chemical effect of electric current. So, I will meet you with the next chapter to discuss about chemical effect given out by the electric current.